all said and done, first time in the water, that's, that's pretty good. Might even get your paycheck. It's always the brother's fault. Right? Did you have a net in your hand? I was getting the net and it come off. You didn't keep it on there long enough. I think his net hit my rod after it come off. See how? Uh, see team dynamics. Yeah, I know. We got to work on this. You got to cooperate by Smith Lake. At least get it done by then. Don't beat each other up before November. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas Rowe. All right, folks. Welcome back to Real Life Lucas Black. Going to be talking about the last event I fished, the ABT 100 at Miller's Ferry, right? The Alabama River. Yes, in my home state, sweet home Alabama, was my first time fishing there at Miller's Ferry and really liked it, learned a lot. It was some cool terrain, cool structure. You know, uh, you had lots of trees falling in, uh, some offshore timber as well. Uh, grass, some primrose, you know, uh, off the bank uh, in some of those pockets. Uh, you even had some flooded timber. Uh, there was also some water hyacinth, right? Which I learned about in New Orleans when I was down there. It was some in that river and it would create some mats out there on the main river, getting stacked up against those logs. So it was a really cool place to fish, learned a lot, had a lot of fun. And uh, so we're gonna talk about a few things. Um, we finished 25th, my brother and I, we were just outside the money, like not even a pound. So, uh, that was kind of disappointing, but we had fun, caught some fish and, uh, they just weren't big enough. That's right. But we're looking forward to the next event in November, our home late Lewis Smith Lake, November 4th. So you guys tune in to ABT 100 live and, uh, watch us put the smack down on those spotted bass. Yeah. But Hey. Right here, swim jig. Love throwing the swim jig. This right here is the uh, dirty jigs, swim jig. But this is that uh, no jack hook. It's a three eighths ounce. And uh, I believe this is the blue shad, I think, color. Uh, anyway, it's got a little blue glimmer with a little bit of green on the back. And I paired that with the Rage Menace, okay? This is the Magnum. I like the Magnum, gives it a little bit more weight, and I, you know, it's a little flat. I feel like it falls a little slower, and it was easier for me to skip, but I'll just rig that up there on, on there and show you guys like that, but that's the profile right there, um, and it was real easy for me to skip up under the bushes and around those grass edges, I think it was really key because in the morning time, especially, those bass were moving up shallow to feed. And so I wanted a soft entry. So I would even skip it around the grass whether I had to or not. It didn't matter if I was skipping it under a bush or skipping it up under trees and logs. I would skip it up there by the bank so it would enter into the water softly. Um, so the setup, I really like this. This was a new rod for me, okay? It's a Dobbins Champion XP. XP. It's a 7.3 heavy, fast action. That's the action on this rod, and it's got what it's for here. It's got spinner baits, buzz baits, Senkos, horny toes, jigs, small swim baits. So pretty much covers it all. And with 15-pound fluorocarbon, Shimano Corrado K-Reel, I really like the 15 pound fluorocarbon matched up with this 3 8 ounce um, and with this rod, it's got a nice tip to it, okay? I think when you're skipping, you really want that nice flexible tip right there, fast action. Uh, it was really key to get that bait just <laughs> skipping, it's so much fun. I love skipping a swim jig. If you haven't done it, you need to try it. That was a big key player for us and for me. I threw it. Lee didn't really throw the swim jig. Uh, he focused more on the frog. I threw the frog as well. We were throwing a popping frog, spro popping frog. Uh, you can't beat it, throwing around the grass. Uh, all that structure that's in the Alabama River, there's tons of structure. 
uh, but you need a popping frog when you go and fish a place like that. That brought a few fish in the boat and it's fun to throw as well. So make sure you have one of those tied on. All right, now next up, there was a key player for us, right? Was the Ultra Vibe Speed Worm. Just a plain old Zoom Ultra Vibe Worm right here. Uh, the original size, that's the color I was throwing, green pumpkin. You know, the water clarity, I don't know, you could probably see maybe around three feet. It's probably about three feet. So it, uh, you know, to me, that's, that's, it was kind of stained, right? Because I grew up fishing Smith Lake, so it's super clear, gin clear, especially in the summertime. So this right here was a key player, and you just want to rig it up, right? This is a 5-volt hook. Yes, I use the big hook um, and rig it up. Texas rig right there, weedless, with a round bend. I like the round bend. It seems to act better. It was the 3 16 ounce weight. All right, pegged right there. I use the black weight and I do the tail down just like that. But really key player when you got a lot of structure, throwing it around the grass, heavy timber, right? You can throw it around that timber. It's a, it's a lighter, more finesse presentation and um, caught a lot of fish on this. We did catch a lot of small ones. It seems like we'd catch more numbers on the on this worm um but something else i would add to it and i usually have it right here on the front of the deck yes yes the secret right here oh don't look too long yep gotta spike the tail you gotta spike the tail i don't want to get it all over my boat right now but just take that tail and put it in that sartreuse die right there that is really key i think it imitates a bluegill really well and it's just something about that worm when it's swimming uh, by those bass, they can't resist it. You know, we, we fish some offshore structure later in the day. As the current started flowing, they started turn, turning those turbines on. And, uh, and that was what I would throw right there. And I had that rigged up. Now, if you guys have never thrown a, a swimming worm, the setup you have is really critical. Okay, those of you that have thrown it, you know what I'm talking about. Because if you're actually swimming the worm, a lot of times through grass, right, they will freight train it, and it's hard for you to catch up to it and really get the hook set. Well, I really like this Tatula Elite 7.3 Multi-Purpose. This is the Brant Ayler Signature Rod right here. Uh, it's a really, really nice rod. You can do multiple things with it, but I found it to work particularly well with the swimming worm. And this here is a Lose Custom 7, 5 to 1 gear ratio reel right here. It's a very small reel, small spool, and I like to throw it on 12-pound fluorocarbon when I'm throwing this smaller size and when I was fishing there in the Alabama River because I would even let fish deeper water with it. So um, it's really critical to have a high gear ratio reel. You can even throw this on an eight gear ratio reel to catch up with those fish. Uh, you just might have to watch your speed a little bit, maybe slow down through the grass. But it was really key set up and that was it. That was our main players. We flipped some too. Um, other people were flipping. And so, um, you know, any creature bait you want to flip in that heavy cover, you can catch them on it. And uh, but that was our key players at the Miller's Ferry ABT 100. Really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We're looking forward to that event in November, right? The last ABT 100 on our home lake. Uh, you guys join in and watch. Make sure you check it out, and uh, I'll do another video about it. But appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Click the notification symbol. We'll see you next time on Real Life with Lucas Black. Ha!